this video, we'll be looking at how different factors affect the membrane structure. So there are namely two particular factors, which is uh, temperature and solvents. And we're going to start with looking at how temperature affects it. Now, here is a diagram that shows how um, the plasma membrane is like or the phospholipid bilayer is like. So here you got the phospholipids, as you can see, with the phosphate head and the two fatty acid tails. And then here in the middle, we can have sometimes have um, protein carriers or protein channels that allow facilitated diffusion or active transport. Now, in between the two fatty acid tails, uh, between different phospholipids, we can find these weak bonds. And these weak bonds are called weak intermolecular forces. Now, these weak intermolecular forces can be things like London forces or van der Waals forces if you're um, learning A-level chemistry. But basically, they kind of stabilize the entire structure. They hold um, all of them together, kind of hold the phospholipids in roughly the same place. Obviously, they can move around a little bit because it's a fluid model, but the idea is that it stabilizes them. However, if you increase the temperature of something, they're going to gain kinetic energy and they're going to start vibrating more. So imagine that these phospholipids start vibrating more in their space. Now, normally speaking, that's going to be fine as long as they stay roughly at the same place. But if the temperature rises really, really high and they gain a lot of kinetic energy, they might start to break up away from one another. And it will look something like this. So here you can see the phospholipids are kind of still roughly in a similar area, but they have moved so much that it actually has broken away from the adjacent phospholipids. There may still be some uh, intermolecular forces uh, around, but the thing is there they might be of a lot less of them because of how far apart the uh, the fatty acid tails might be from one another. And on top of that, the uh, transport protein, so the protein channel or the protein carrier, may also denature at high temperatures in a similar concept of how the atoms and the amino acids are vibrating so much that it actually breaks uh, apart some of the bonds that are found in the tertiary and quaternary structure. So it will denature and affect, and that would affect the permeability. It could go both ways. It could mean that increase permeability or decrease it depending on how those protein carriers or channels are working. But apart from that, if you look at just the phospholipid bilayer, because the phospholipids are further away from one another, the gaps in between them is bigger. So therefore, simple diffusion may happen more. So actually, increase in temperature, generally speaking, increases the permeability because of the larger gaps in between the two. So just to summarize, there are lots of weak intermolecular forces between the fatty acid tails in the phospholipid bilayer. There are also some of these forces between the phospholipids and also the protein channels or carriers within the bilayer there. But the thing is, if you increase the temperature, it increases the kinetic energy of the phospholipids. They move apart so much that they might break some of those bonds and that would increase the permeability because there are bigger gaps for some of the simple molecules to diffuse through. Uh, but on the other hand, it can also denature some of the protein channels or carriers and that could affect the permeability as well. Now let's look at the second factor that could affect membrane uh, structure, which is solvents. Now, as a quick reminder, we can remember that the uh, phosphate head is hydrophilic, meaning that they can actually uh, mingle with any water molecules, which is kind of uh, filling up all of the cytoplasm and the aqueous environment. And then in, in the middle of the bilayer, we've got the hydrophobic areas, which are the fatty acid areas. So they are generally speaking non-polar and they don't like to interact with water. So the idea is that the fatty acid tails are kind of shielded away from the aqueous environment. However, sometimes we can have non-polar solvents that actually can interact with the fatty acid tails and uh, actually disrupts the membrane and it will look something like this. So these red bits here represent the non-polar solvent. So they can actually sort of insert themselves within the bilayer and that would actually cause uh, some of the fatty acid tails to kind of kink around it and bend. And because of that, that would disrupt uh, the weak intermolecular forces. It will break some of them and hence disrupting the bilayer. And if you disrupt the bilayer, again, you're allowing them to kind of drift apart slightly. So there are bigger gaps between the phospholipids 
therefore increasing the permeability and the fluidity of the entire bilayer. And in if it's just a, a few of them, if it's just one or two molecules um, of the solvent, it's probably going to be okay. But if there is a high concentration of this nonpolar solvent, in the extreme case, it can break the membrane. So one common example of a nonpolar solvent is ethanol, which is basically alcohol. And uh, because of how ethanol can interact with the membrane, it would explain a lot of the things that we see in everyday life. So one classic example is uh, the fact that how alcohol affects nervous transmission. So um, you will learn more about this in year 13, but the concept of nervous transmission is that it is a process that actually involves the membranes of neurons. So it's about a change in the ion concentration inside and out of the neuron across the neuron membrane. Now, if you drank uh, alcohol, then the ethanol in the alcohol can again interact with the uh, neuron membrane, uh, and therefore that could actually affect the permeability, which means affects the ion concentration difference in and out of the cell, and that would explain why sometimes people behave drunk or tipsy when they have uh, when they had some alcohol. Another example is that we can also use um, alcohol wipes to uh, as a disinfectant. And so in the alcohol wipes, it's got high concentration of alcohol and high concentrations can actually um, disrupt the uh, bilayer found in bacteria. So it completely destroys the bacterial membrane, hence killing the bacteria. So as a quick summary, uh, we know that there are different properties to the phosphohead and the uh, fatty acid tails in phospholipids, and that forms a hydrophobic core in the middle, or we say that there it's a non-polar core. However, when there are non-polar solvents that are interacting with the membrane, these solvent molecules can disrupt the bilayer and, uh, and actually cause some of these weak intermolecular forces to break and it opens up and widens the gap between the phospholipid molecules and therefore this increases the permeability and the fluidity of the bilayer and ultimately at high concentrations it can actually completely disintegrate the membrane and it breaks the whole cell apart. So there you have it, these are the two factors that affect the membrane structure. Uh, if you increase the temperature or having the presence of solvents, specifically non-polar solvents, they both can disrupt the bilayer by breaking the weak intermolecular forces between the fatty acid tails, and then ultimately that could increase the permeability and fluidity. And in both situations, if there's a high enough temperature or high enough concentration of the uh, solvent, it could actually break the membrane entirely apart. And these are the two factors that affect membrane structure.